Hello! So, did you ever wanted to make animation, but you didn't know how to use any program? Did you ever wanted to create a funny gif, but you didn't want to download a new thing and learn how to edit? Did you ever wanted to create a simple thing that just moves from one side to another? Or did you ever wanted to make a really complex animation that will take a lot of time and would probably be easier in another program? Did you ever wanted the worst program to make actual animation? If you say yes to any of those questions, it's your lucky day! I just have the right tool for you! Disclaimer, this tutorial is only applicable for Photoshop CS6 Extended. If you don't have this program, please download it. Where to download it? I don't know, find it on the internet. So, you started your Photoshop, it's here and you want to make animation. So first thing you need to do is go to Window and open Timeline. You're gonna have this beautiful thing here. But as you might have noticed, there's nothing here. So first let's create a project with resolution of a monitor. 1920 by 1080. Now that you have your canvas, you can select between creating a video timeline or frame animation. Never use this. Forget this. This doesn't exist. This is stupid and you should never use this. Go to video timeline and click it. Bam! You got a video timeline. You can zoom in and out using this slider tool on the bottom. And that's that's basically navigation in this in this timeline. There's nothing else. So first thing you wanna do is if you want to make a funny GIF, sure, you can ignore this part. But if you want to make like actual animation and like drawing in Photoshop, you might want to change your timeline frame rate to 12 or, or 24. Because if you don't do this now and you forget about this, later it's going to mess all your timings for frames that you drown. So never forget the first step. So I'm gonna set to 12 frames per second. So right now, if I draw something and I set this to be one second, you can see that it uh, takes 12 frames. Okay, so now you got your frame rate set up. You thinking like, right, let's start drawing. So you, you, you go here, you create new layer and you draw another ball. And then you go forward, make another layer and you draw another ball. But oh wait, it's overlapping. So you, like, you see, this, this is not a good way of animating. What you want to do is do it efficiently. And here's a trick. Here's a very important trick to... Oh my fucking god. Okay, the sirens are over. So the trick is... So you go to edit keyboard shortcuts. You stay on keyboard shortcuts. You change shortcuts for panel menus. And you go down until you find timeline... Until you find timeline video. Now... Here are all the uh, all the options, all the menus you can activate in the timeline window, and you can you can give them shortcuts. Like for example, you can create a shortcut to go next frame, or you can make a shortcut to go previous frame. To be honest, you only need one essential shortcut, which is split at playhead. On default Photoshop, there is no shortcut for this, but believe me, this will make the most big difference in your animation in Photoshop. So uh, set it to Control E. I find it very useful to, to have that. And there's like nothing assigned to Control E. So just press OK. And what happens with this shortcut? What happens is basically clicking on this scissor. When you click on that scissor, it splits your frame. And now you can do it with your, with your shortcut. So basically, that means, let me just delete everything. That means if I create a ball and I split it, I can select this layer, move it a bit forward, split it again, move it a bit forward, split it again, move it a bit forward, split it again. And look, I just made a simple animation just by moving and splitting with shortcut. This is a lot faster and a lot more reliable than drawing it by hand and it's faster than clicking the button. Okay, so now let me answer some Q and A's. But Alu, I cannot, I cannot have the window like yours. It just sticks. I, I don't know. Okay, if window sticks to a side, just hold Control and drag on top. If you hold Control, you can put it anywhere. What I usually do, I just put it here under, and it's gone. What Control does is it basically disables the sni snipping. Like you can see, it snips here, and if I hold Control. It doesn't happen. So, if you want to move your windows and be messy, just hold control. 
Alu? When I when I split my layer, it just creates more layers, and it's uh, what's going on? Okay, this is a very easy to solve problem. Why does it create layers? Because in timeline, there's difference between normal layer and a video group. It looks the same on here, but it looks different on your layer window. So basically, when you split a layer, it creates a new layer and it, it, it treats it as a different track. But on video group, if there's a layer on video group, you can split it and it's still on the same track. So this, you want you want to use video groups all the time. You will never use normal lay layers. So enough of me talking. How do you fix it easily? Simple. When you split your, your for like you, you create a layer and when you split it the first time, you just drag it down and bam, it automatically creates a video group. If you create a new layer inside here, it will just put in front of your uh, cursor thing. And if you want to add more video groups, you just click on this icon here and click new video group, bam, and you've got fresh video group to add more layers. Oh my god, Alu, I split my layer, but I cannot draw, it's broken, everything's broken. Okay, calm down. When you split your layer, it selects both of your layers. So make sure after you split, you click on the frame you want to edit, and then you can edit. Because if you have wrong layer selected and you draw, it doesn't work. And if you move, you don't see the movement, but you actually move on previous layer. So if I move right now, it moves, but you don't see it. So be careful what you have selected. Oh my god, Alu, I just press Ctrl E and it just split everything. Okay, Ctrl E, the split function, it splits the selected layers at your playhead. So if it splits more than you wanted, just make sure you select what you want to split. So I, if I want to split this layer, I just select this layer and press Ctrl E. Bam, it's split. All right, so let's recap what we have learned. We have learned how to change the frame rate on this set frame rate. We learned that there's a difference between a video group and a layer. So if I put a layer outside video group, they look the same on the timeline, but they behave differently because when I split, one stays on the same track, another multiplies. We have learned some technical uses, like every time you split, it selects both bo both uh, parts, so you need to make sure you select what you what you want to work on. And if you want to split multiple layers, you simply select multiple layers and press Ctrl E, and it will split everything that's selected. So this is a recap of basic split manipulation so now let, let's actually let's actually make some animation let's make like uh, I don't know I'm gonna draw a face I'm gonna draw a face here okay it's a smile so I want this smile to become a frown so there you go you see this is not very impressive so what I want to do in between, and again, this is I, I'm gonna show you how to how to create technically how to use Photoshop to make animation. I will not explain the principles of animation like anticipation, weight, exaggeration, all this all, all this knowledge. You either need to wait for another tutorial or go watch other people on YouTube that are better at explaining it, or or l read the animators toolkit handbook thing uh, there's a picture right now on the screen i don't know read that book it has a lot of of theory and animation and okay let's go let's get back to the video don't use this video as a way to learn how to animate this is technical video for you to learn how to use photoshop to make animation so i want to change the face so what i will do is go in the middle and control t squish it press enter and now if i play this it it, it it does a thing. It, it has this squish and it looks good. I want to make this faster. So basically, resize the frames and play again. Okay, this is better. This is a lot better. So the thing about animating like this is space. Space basically plays the animation.
If it doesn't play, make sure the timeline shortcuts are enabled. Maybe it's disabled and every, every time you press space, nothing happens. So you press space and it, sh it, it will show animation in real time. So I want this to end right here. So if I want to crop my animation, you can, ho you can drag this handle here and it will limit your animation. So if I would export this right now, it would only render this part. But let's, let's make it a bit more interesting. Let's, in this frame, let's make the eyes change. So I'm just gonna go here and change eyes. Okay, it's, it looks good. Bam, bam. Let's, let's split here again. And you can see, I'm basically splitting and exaggerating the motion. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stretch a bit. Space. Yes, it's a lot, it's a lot better. So it has this uh, kind of anticipation thing going on. And this is basically how you animate on Photoshop. Imagine you want to paint this. Well, I'm glad you asked. It's very easy. You, see, you literally go to each layer and I'm gonna select multiply mode on my brush. It's shift right click. And I'm gonna literally paint every single layer. Yes, this is how animation in Photoshop looks like. You will have to do everything manually. There is no shortcut. There is nothing. So if you are smart right now, you might have guessed that this would be a lot better if I started this smiley face already f filled. And you're right. But those tricks, those techniques, you only learn with experience. So don't, don't worry about messing up. The more you animate in Photoshop, the more you learn what you're supposed to do first and what you're supposed to do second. It, it, believe me, it's very easy to, to learn mistakes in animation because if you don't learn you, with your mistakes, you will be doing hundreds of hours of work and our brains, the human brain is really good at mitigating the amount of work you have to do. So just do mistakes and learn with mistakes. But Alu! I, what if I want to make face move from one side to another side? I, I don't want to do frame by frame. Yes, I didn't touch this uh, part of the topic yet, but let's do it right now. So our face does this thing and now I want it to slide from this part to the, to, to the end of the screen. So in order to do this, you need to click on this amazing arrow and it will show magic. Ooh. You can see there's this familiar uh, stopwatch that, that if you used other adult products, you will recognize. Yes, this is a uh, motion twins. So basically, if you click on this clock, it will, click, it will create this diamond, which is a keyframe. And if you edit this circle, you see that it created another keyframe. And now the Photoshop will basically calculate animation between these two keyframes. And you can change it however you want. Like if I go here in the middle and move it again, it will follow the path I, I designed. And you can like move these uh, keyframes in, in space. So it, there's like a lot of things you can do. Like if I play it right now, it goes like really fast. But if I put it in the beginning, it's gonna do opposite. It's gonna start really fast and then it's gonna slowly. So this is animation and you can animate anything in between here. You can animate opacity, which is basically if I create a frame here and create a frame at the end, it's like 100% opacity, nothing happens. But if I go here in the middle and set opacity to 0%, you see, it created a keyframe automatically, and now our face is going to fade and fade back. And there you go, like, we got this ghosting thing happening, it's very easy, very simple. But Alu, I want, I want my, my, my ball to rotate, but when I press Ctrl R and rotate, it doesn't change it. What, what's happening? Great question, my imaginary viewer. I will give you a simple answer. Go to the layer, right click smart object everything is gone and you can animate rotation now i will not explain this because the video is already 15 minutes long and smart object is like a whole new world so right now you are able to create basic animations we are co we covered the frame rate we covered the video group layers the how to cut how to resize the layers how to create simple twins uh, how to select, uh, like basic, basic things. Now you can like make this and to be honest, 
difference between this and an like actual storyboard animation is just a story. Like a storyboard has a story. This doesn't have a story, therefore it's simple and it doesn't need to say anything. The final thing I want to say before I finish the video, because it's already like 15 minutes long, to export this as a video, you click on this button on top, uh, on bottom left, on this arrow, and you can export it as a video. So it's gonna load a bit, and it's gonna initialize video export, and basically with this you can save it as MP4 or you can save it as array of PNGs. So there you go. Here's your name. I can. I want to save this as Adobe Media Encoder H2 H264, which is MP4 format. Uh, frame rate, bam, bam, bam. Everything's perfect. You want to select the work area or all frames. Everything self-explanatory. You click on render, and it's going to render the video. It's pretty quickly, depending on how many effects and what you want to do. You will have MP MP4 file. Now, this is how you export a video. If you want to export a GIF, you press Control Shift Alt S to open Save for Web, or you can go to File, Save for Web. And on top, you select preset from JPEG or whatever you have there to GIF. It's gonna take a while to load the first time because it's like rendering all the frames. But after it loads, the first thing you wanna do is change from once the looping animation from once to forever. This is a big mistake. Everyone forgets to check this. And when they play it, it plays once and it's gone. There you go. This is GIF. You can save this as a GIF. It's gonna it's gonna play on, on your website, on your internet on your Discord, whatever you want to do, this is your animation. Here's the size of the GIF, it's it's right now 300 kilobytes. I can make it smaller by making, um, I can make the size smaller by making the full size of this uh, canvas smaller. So it's the best way to reduce uh, the size of the file. Right now it's only 56 mega, uh, kilobytes. I, I reduced it like eight times just by changing the percent from 100 to 25% of the original size and it still looks completely recognizable so if you press save it's gonna it's going to save very simple we we covered the basics you can make simple animations i will do more maybe later depending on demand this is basically for anticular pony because he went, he he was pestering me about oh, <laughs> teaching how to do animation in photoshop and i hope this this will cover the basics so any questions just leave a comment and if there is enough comments in the video i will just make another tutorial because I, it's easier to make a tutorial than answer to every comment personally <sighs> oh my god i forgot to do celeste impersonation wait having okay <clears throat> hello my name is princess celestia and this is the ending of the video goodbye